This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. Hey, EMM listeners. We're excited to announce our upcoming event, Palliative, a community educational event exploring the nuance of pediatric palliative care on June 27th at 6.30 p.m. in the Anschutz Health Sciences Building. We will be screening the Emmy-nominated short film, Palliative, featuring Dr. Nadia Tremonti's work providing end-of-life care and easing the suffering of her patients and their families at Children's Hospital of Michigan. The film will be followed by a keynote address by Dr. Tremonti and a panel discussion with experts from Colorado's pediatric palliative care teams. Tickets are $30, and all proceeds will be donated to the Denver Hospice's Footprints Program, the Princess and Superhero Party hosted by Children's Hospital of Michigan, and Emergency Medical Minute. There will be food and drinks served prior to the screening and during a brief intermission. Come join us for a thought-provoking evening with the community for our first event since the pandemic. Check out the link in our show notes to buy tickets. Thank you. So I was going to take a few minutes to talk about post-intubation, sedation, and analgesia, why we choose the different uh, medications we choose, and the timing of that administration. So when patients have respiratory failure, it's generally straightforward to know that we need to intubate them. But one thing that sometimes is omitted by the physicians, and it's important for the nurses to know as well, uh, to help us provide care for our patients, that there should absolutely be orders for post-intubation analgesia, importantly, and that's one of the uh, focuses of this talk, as well as sedation. So I was going to give you a case, and then we'll talk about why we choose the different agents. So uh, this was a patient that had come into the emergency room with sepsis, uh, hypotension, 77-year-old female, and then uh, had lost airway uh, reflexes, so had to be intubated. Intubation was successful. So one of the key aspects of that case is that afterwards we had to put in a central line. The patient still would need uh, analgesia because the intubation is noxious central line placement is noxious, so that's one priority. And then hypotension was an issue, and some of the sedating medicines potentially can cause hypotension as a side effect, so uh, we have to make the right choice in terms of that. Taking a step back, there are other choices that specific patient scenarios mandate, so I'm going to give you those, and then we'll we'll go back to this case, okay? So if a patient comes in with an intracranial bleed, what is the sedating medicine of choice? So let's take a step back even further. So in terms of categories of sedation, most commonly we'll see propofol. We can also use Presidex. We can also use ketamine. So those are the non-benzodiazepine sedating medicines. Uh, and then generally it's you know Versed or sometimes Ativan, uh, which would be the benzodiazepine class of medicines. As a construct, uh, propofol uh, is something that can lower blood pressure and uh, specifically keep intracranial pressure lower. So that's relevant for uh, the case I just presented. The Presidex is generally the preferred choice in the ICU because it's generally sort of a light sedative. The patients can still be aroused and that's protective uh, in terms of getting them uh, successfully extubated and avoiding longer term complications. And then uh, ketamine, that has a benefit uh, since it does not promote hypotension. So that's relevant for our case. Uh, And then it also uh, allows the airways uh, bronchodilatory, so for asthma patients. Uh, Benzodiazepine, generally frowned upon in general, uh, except for patients who have delirium tremens, because the risk, especially in elderly patients, is uh, delirium. It delays their uh, extubation. So going back to our case of a patient who presented with hypotension, which agent did we end up choosing? Ketamine, right. So basically we gave her analgesia. Fentanyl tends to be less, uh, causes less hypotension than other narcotics. So, you know, fentanyl given at a dose of two mics per kilo is always good practice after intubation. That's sort of a priority. Uh, And then we use ketamine in this case. Other scenarios, the propofol would be useful in general, but also uh, with intracranial hypertension being an issue, like an intracranial bleed. Ketamine also would be useful for intubating an asthmatic patient. Presidex has some role, uh, but mostly for uh, sort of as a second line, at least in our ER setting, and the benzodiazepines for <coughs> patients who are in, you know, sometimes status epilepticus, but uh, in delirium tremens. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a perspective on why we choose those different agents. 
There's still a focus on the analgesia, which would be fentanyl, then uh, choose the right sedative. Another priority is, you know, we're increasingly using the RAS score, uh, the Richmond, uh, Richmond agitation uh, and sedation score. Usually for ER patients, our target's gonna be more like a minus two or minus three, which is sort of a moderate or deep sedation because we wanna get them oftentimes to the scanner. Uh, we want them uh, to be still for our procedures. A rule of thumb thereafter is usually like a RAS score of minus one uh, because the lighter th the sedation while well keeping the patient comfortable uh, promotes them becoming uh, eventually extubated and limits the side effects of the medicines. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little perspective on what, what, what we use to make those decisions. Does anyone have any questions? We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.